you must have observed that sometimes when light just enters a dark room you know the dust particles in the light become visible and the path of the beam of the light also becomes visible this is called the tyndall effect how does this occur also why is the sky blue and why does the sky appear to be red you know during sunrise and sunset we will learn about all these phenomena and more in this chapter this chapter is called the scattering of light so let's proceed and learn more about the scattering of light so first of all let's understand what the scattering of light is scattering is the deviation of light from its straight line path because of the presence of a large number of tiny random particles in the path different light rays travel in different randomly reflected paths because of scattering now that's a pretty complicated definition what exactly is scattering you see there is nothing if there's just vacuum in that case light travels in straight lines isn't it but if there are a lot of small particles these could be particles of air they could be dust particles they could be smoke particles if there are some particles then light strikes these particles and it gets scattered in all directions because it gets reflected randomly here there and everywhere understood so that is what the scattering of light is the random reflection of light you know when it strikes a large number of particles is called scattering scattering for example occurs when sunlight strikes the earth's atmosphere you see the earth's atmosphere consists of smoke it consists of dust water droplets and air molecules so many things so all of these you know things water droplets smoke dust and air molecules they scatter sunlight understood and sunlight spreads in all directions so you can say that something like this happens you know something like this you can see that the sunlight is striking this particular mass consisting of water droplets and it is getting scattered here there and everywhere isn't it this exact phenomenon is called scattering similarly there could be dust particles air molecules in each case light strikes the molecules and it gets scattered like this it gets reflected randomly in different directions in fact you have already studied scattering in your previous class class 9th we had studied the tyndall effect you know in class 9 a specific kind of scattering of light by colloidal particles which makes the particles and the beam of light visible is called tyndall effect so a special type of scattering in which light strikes colloidal particles you know we had learned earlier that colloidal particles are particles which have a certain specific diameter you know when light strikes these particular colloidal particles and when it gets scattered that effect is the tyndall effect tyndall effect is an action when a light beam enters a room like this you can see the light beam here you know you must have observed such a beam many times in your house or in your classroom or in many places if there's a dark room if you open the window slightly a light beam enters the room isn't it this is the tyndall effect you can see here you know the vague outline of different particles you can also see the light beam which is spread out like this isn't it this light beam is visible because of the scattering of light if there was vacuum in this room if there was absolutely no scattering of light in that case the light beam would just come you know it would not be visible you would have light in the room but the light beam would not be visible like these straight lines here understood these lines are visible the dust particles are visible because the light beam comes and strikes the dust particles and then it gets reflected randomly causing this light beam to become visible understood so the colloidal smoke particles inside the room scatter light similarly if you go to a forest sometimes you can see a view like this you can see the light beam here again can't you this one that happens because dense forests have a lot of water droplets hanging in the air light beams strike the water droplets and the light gets scattered and that is the reason you see this mist and you see rays of light you know clearly visible like this they are visible the light beam is visible because of the scattering of light and when scattering occurs with light striking colloidal particles particles of a particular size we call that effect the tyndall effect understood colloidal solutions show the tyndall effect 
light gets scattered and the light beam becomes visible inside colloidal solutions. There's also another interesting thing related to scattering. Scientists have found out that very tiny particles, particles that you know have a diameter very close to a certain quantity called the wavelength of light, they scatter mostly blue light. Understood? What this means is that if the particles are really small with diameters comparable to the wavelength of light, then if white light strikes those particles, not all of the white light will be scattered. Most of the white light will pass through undeviated and only the blue light will be scattered. Understood? This is what scientists have found out. So here you can see that the particles are small and white light is passing undeviated but blue light is getting scattered. As you already know, white light consists of seven colors. Violet, indigo, blue, yellow, orange, red, green, isn't it? So out of all these colors, violet, blue, these colors, they get scattered, you know, by small particles. If the particles, however, are larger, in that case, the entire white light gets scattered. Understood? You see, White light consists of seven colors and out of these colors, violet light and blue light get scattered the most and red light in general gets scattered the least. If the particles are really large, only then red light gets scattered, understood? But if the particles are very tiny, then only blue light gets scattered. If the particles are really large, then all the colors of the light get scattered and the red light also gets scattered. You will understood the reasons for this in higher classes. What you must remember is that when particles are really tiny, only blue light gets scattered or violet light. And when the particles are large, then all colors get scattered and red light is the most difficult to scatter. The particles have to be really, really large to scatter red light also. So there you go. Now one fascinating fact here is that the scattering of light is actually responsible for a very, very important phenomenon. The fact that the sky is blue in color. We all know that the sky appears blue, isn't it? But have you ever thought, why is the sky blue? The sky is blue because the sunlight coming from the sun, which is basically white light, gets scattered by the air molecules to release blue light. Understood? You see, air consists of air molecules, dust particles, water particles, smoke particles, isn't it? Smoke particles, dust particles, water particles are large. So they scatter white light. Understood? So white light from the sun comes and white light gets scattered. However, air molecules are very tiny of the size of the wavelength of light. And therefore, air molecules scatter only blue light. Understood? So the sky appears bluish white because the air molecules scatter blue light and all the other substances present in air, dust particles, water molecules, smoke particles, they scatter white light. They scatter all colors of light. Understood? Because they are large. The sky is blue because the air molecules scatter only blue light and this blue light becomes visible. You know, then we are able to see what the sky is. So basically it is because of the atmosphere on the earth that blue lights get scattered and we see the sky to be blue. Interestingly, if uh, you know you go out of the Earth's atmosphere, in that case the sky will not appear blue. The sky will become black. Understood? Because the light will not be scattered. So this is a very important fact that you must remember. You know why the sky is blue. Another interesting question you know sometimes they ask is, why are danger signals and all important signals shown with red light? Even the traffic signal that says stop, the most important signal, is shown with red light. The reason is that red light is the least scattered, as I had just told you. Blue light, violet light is easily scattered. Green light, yellow light is also reasonably easy to scatter. But red light passes undeviated for a long time. Even when it passes through the atmosphere, it gets scattered with some difficulty. Understood? So for example, if you leave a beam of red light and if you compare it with a beam of yellow and green light, this is what you will see. As you can see, yellow light and green light have gotten scattered, isn't it? This blur that you can see is because of the scattering of yellow light and green light. The light rays are striking the particles of the atmosphere and that is why they are getting scattered. 
but red light is passing undistracted without scattering. So this is a fact you must remember. Red light is very difficult to scatter which is why all danger signals and all important signals have red light in them. So now let's solve a problem to understand scattering better. Which of the following statements is correct? A. Blue light scatters more than red light. An astronaut does not see a blue sky, he sees a black sky. C. The sky appears black from the moon. Blue light has a wavelength equal to that of red light. So well, let's answer these questions. The first option says blue light scatters more than red light. This option is correct. You see blue light definitely gets scattered more than red light. Red light is scattered the least. So option A is correct. Option B says an astronaut does not see a blue sky. He sees a black sky. This option is also correct. You see if you go into outer space there is no atmosphere. Isn't it? So there is no scattering of light and so there is no blue sky. An astronaut is a person who travels in outer space. So when an astronaut is in outer space, he will see a black sky because there is no scattering of light. As there is no atmosphere in outer space, the atmosphere is only there up till a certain distance above the earth's surface. The next point is, the sky appears black from the moon. This option is also correct. You see the moon does not have any atmosphere. Clearly the sky will not appear blue. The sky appears blue when there is an atmosphere and there is scattering of light. When there is no scattering, the sky is black. Blue light has a wavelength equal to that of red light. Well, this option is also wrong. Wavelength is a term that you will learn in higher classes. But for now you need to understand that the red light has the greatest wavelength and blue light has the least wavelength. Don't worry about exactly what wavelength means right now but understand that red light has the greatest wavelength and blue light has the least wavelength. They don't have the same wavelength. In fact the greater the wavelength the lesser the scattering. So red light which has a great wavelength has less scattering while blue light which has a smaller wavelength has more scattering. So these were the options. Here's another problem. Given below is a picture taken inside a dense forest. Here we go. So this is the picture taken inside a dense forest. Now we are asked some questions. What is the effect shown in the picture? Complete the statement. This effect is caused because of the dash of light when it strikes dash particles. Well, clearly the effect shown is the Tyndall effect. We had learnt that in dense forests, light strikes water particles or water molecules and it gets scattered and then the light beam becomes visible and the particles also become visible. This is the Tyndall effect. This effect is caused because of the scattering of light when it strikes colloid particles. So there you go. This is the answer. Now that we've studied about the scattering of light, let us study another common application of the scattering of light. You see, every day you see the sun. Every day the sun lights up the earth, isn't it? In the morning the sun rises, in the afternoon the sun is at its peak and in the evening the sun sets. When the sun rises, the sun appears reddish orange. However, when the sun has reached its peak at noon time or at 2 p.m., the sun appears bright, it's whitish in color, isn't it? And at sunset again, the sun appears reddish orange. So why does this happen? Why does the sun change its color, you know, as it moves, you know, in the sky? In the morning it is red, in the evening it is red, in the afternoon it is white or yellowish white. How is that so? You see, the point is that when the sun rises and when it sets, it is farthest from our eye understood when on the other hand it is above us you know right above us at noon time then it is nearest to us understood 
So scientists have found that at sunrise and sunset, the sun is far away from us. During noon time, the sun is nearer to us. Now, when the sun is far away from us, in that case, what happens is that, you know, as the light from the sun reaches our eyes, it gets scattered. The blue part of the light gets scattered by a large amount. Understood? The blue part of the light, the green part of the light, it all gets scattered. Therefore, the part of the light that reaches us is actually only the red light because as you know, the red light does not get scattered easily. So only the red light reaches our eyes and the blue part of the light gets scattered as the sunlight is reaching our eyes because the sun is at maximum distance from us during sunrise and sunset. So when it covers such a long distance, the blue part gets scattered and the red part reaches our eye. The sun therefore appears red. On the other hand, when the sun has risen and when it rises up in the atmosphere like this, it appears bright white. This is because when the sun is right above us, then it is much nearer to us. Therefore, a very small amount of blue light is scattered and there is not enough time, you know, to scatter all of the blue light and all of the green light. A very tiny amount of blue green light is scattered. Understood? So you can say that more or less scattering does not take place and the sunlight reaches straight to us and we get the entire white light. Understood? So when the sun is near us, when the sun is right above us at noon, in that case the sun appears white because hardly any scattering takes place as the sun is near us and the light does not get enough time to scatter. Very little blue light scatters and we get white light. That is the reason the sun appears red at sunrise and sunset and it appears white during noon time. So again, this is a fascinating you know, thing to know. In fact, we can even conduct an experiment you know, to understand how the sun appears red in the morning and how it appears white at noon.